Josh, I don't know if you have recently seen the latest that has come out of Dana White's mouth, but one of the things he said about the Bilal Muhammad versus Leon Edwards fights was it wasn't a barn burner. And that's kind of what you'd expect since he's been training with Habib. Is that saying that he didn't like the way Habib fought too? That's a little bit of a jab, it feels like it, Habib. Little bit. It just Come feels on. like one. I mean, but you know, yeah. let's not let's not be fooled. Dana would try to jump 15 rivers if he could get Habib back just for one fight. So let's not Dana, Dana would cut off his little finger. Yeah, right? he, the whole Yakuza <laughs> style. He'd be like, you know what? You give me like, one more fight. Gone. It's done. Gone. Fingers yeah, gone. Done, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I thought it was a little strange that he said it wasn't a barn burner. Bilal's been training with Habib. So his performance was what you would expect. I felt it was a jab, but on top of it, though, too, did he mean it in terms of it was so dominant? Because that's exactly what it was. It was a very dominant. So I can look at it the positive way. To me, I'm going to take the positive route and go yeah, ahead. Look at you, it, sunshine. There you go. I'm just saying. Just rays of sunshine coming out everywhere. No rain. All about the, the Rays. I got it. Well, John, I see, you, I and I, you're going. you and I have been criticized a lot for um, being against Dana White. I'm not against Dana White. Not, and I'm, so I'm going to look at the positive side on this and be like, hey, Bilal was very dominant in this fight. He controlled very, basically every round except for round three. And I thought he fought a beautiful performance. You couldn't have asked for a more dominant performance. You know, he made a mistake in the third round, got his back taken, couldn't get, couldn't get the escape. He messed up at the end of the 40 seconds of the fifth round and got cut open. You know, and it made the last 40 seconds a fun fight. Outside of that, he dominated almost every minute of every second of that round. And I thought it was a brilliant performance by him. Uh, in terms of with Dana, look, there was a lot going on that night, John. Let's be honest. Like, there was just a well, lot of stuff going on. Bet US, America's favorite sports book and casino. Live betting and race book. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. I think you really got to look and say the truth of the matter is it takes two to make a barn burner. Mm -hmm. It takes two guys that are really going after it and. Two guys that are so close that they are having back and forth situations and both guys are having those moments, not just one round. The third round was was Leon's. Obviously, he he wins that round, but really that was the only round. You could kind of steer that he was getting close in the fifth if there was more, yeah. but he, he wasn't able to take that round. And so one round against four rounds, the barn burners are the ones that are super close. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to have two guys that are really competing. Go back and you know, look at Pantoja against Moreno. Look at that fight. That's a barn burner. Mm -hmm. And it's because, man, it's so back and forth and things are going on. You can't have those all the time. And it, it takes two to tango. I look and I say, Bilal Muhammad came out and put on a performance that was absolutely fantastic. He did everything he was supposed to do. He pressured a guy that is hard to pressure. He took him down at will and... You know, we've had other very good wrestlers not be able to take Leon down. I, I know that his coach came out and said that he had a niggle, but in his back, I don't know what a niggle I don't is, either. but <laughs> but that's what he said. He's got you a niggle. Be careful in his how back. you sound that out too. I don't want that on the show. N i g g l e. <laughs> I don't know what a niggle but is. A, 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 I know what a nickel is, <laughs> but I look in. It's like part of the fact is you know you also have to. You know, Dana was not happy with the entire show. No. And, you know, when you're not happy with the entire show and then the the main event is fairly one-sided, I think that kind of led to a little bit of his frustration and stuff. But he's also got, you know, when you're pointing one finger forward, there's three coming back at you, Josh. Yeah. And you got to look at those and you got to say, well, we did put these fighters in a position where they were fighting at 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. That No one... No one works out at those times. No one <laughs> fights at those times. It is an unusual situation. And even if you try to prepare for it, it's odd. It's just an odd time for you. Your body doesn't feel the same. You don't feel like you're on top of things. You kind of feel sluggish most of the time when things are different than what you're accustomed to. So I think, you know, a lot of it is he wants all the pay-per-views to be fantastic. And, as good as you can make it on paper, you can never equate that to what's going to happen 
you know, in the cage. And when you have all the decisions that they had in that show, I think that's what makes him in the end go. I got all these fighters. I'm giving them extra money for their bonuses and stuff. And I got nothing but decisions. That means people aren't going for it. No, it just means that they were they were tight competition. Yeah, but John, there's a couple <clears throat> ways to look at it. There's a picture of him put getting ready to wrap the belt around Bilal Muhammad, and he just looks defeated. Dana White does. That's because it's five in the morning. Yeah, but he's on American time. That should be normal. It's I, ten o'clock at on. night. I saw people in the stands sleeping. Yes. But now you don't pay big money to go to the UFC in Manchester and want to fall asleep. No, I agree. I think where you're going to find, though, is that you kind of offset both parties by doing this. What happens is when now you go to another country and they're there five days before, some of them get there seven days before, some of the staff. And sometimes that's not good. And sometimes that's not good. But what I'm saying, though, is that now you've asked them to stay awake during the day or during the night so they can be awake during the during the event body so, clocks all screwed up yeah so the ones that come from the states that are working for the ufc their body clock is trying to change to get adjusted to the uk time when in fact they can't because they their shows at five in the morning then the fighters that are there they're getting all screwed up because they're having to fight it when they're normally sleeping so you really kind of messed up both sides of this equation you you messed it up for the people that work for the promotion and some of the fighters that came over having to fight they would normally fight at their normal time but because they showed up five days early and now have to stay awake or fall asleep during the day shut the blinds have the night nope. the blinds close and then try to get sleep try to during go, the day. try to go train train at four o'clock in the morning and then get up in the middle of the night to go train but then on top of it now they're wide awake but now nothing's open you can't get food you can't do anything he kind of shot himself in the foot by scheduling the event this way. And it kind of baffled me that they were doing this. And I get, I understand like for pay-per-view yeah. but I, on a Saturday, we've seen them in, in Saudi Arabia at noon. We've seen them at 9.00 AM. People will get up and watch at those times. I mean, maybe their pay-per-view numbers are not doing what they were doing. So they were trying to get it back to a normal time frame, which we yeah. have heard the pay-per-view numbers are not what they were. We understand, but also too, the cards have not been what they were what they used to be they're not as good right now i don't know what's going on i don't know why they're not able to deliver the better pay-per-view cards this card to me i thought there was some good fights on there um there was a obviously well it was a shocker that Bilal won the way he won uh he dominated the fight that was a shocker but then you're also asking the fighter from the uk to fight at 5 a.m he just what and he even said you know like i just felt off from round one i just felt tired Nothing was going my way. And so when that happened, where you, when I saw Dana wrapping the belt around Bilal and he just looked defeated, there's just different ways to approach that. Now, <clears throat> he said, I know the comments were made. I'm not giving out $100,000 bonuses. I'm not giving out bonuses anymore. Stop asking me for it. Well, you, uh, I mean, you, you did the same thing. He did the same thing with the San Jose show, the second Fox show. Um, after I fought at UFC seven, uh, UFC Fox seven against Nate, he did the next show was UFC 10. I believe it was in San Jose Fox 10 and it was on a Wednesday and the opening fight was like at 11 AM on a Wednesday in Silicon Valley where everyone is addicted to work, everybody. Yeah. And I think that was yeah. the weekend after or the weekend before the Anderson Silva Chael Sonnen fight. And so people were, and that was in Oakland, which is no, I kid you not. 40 minutes away. Yeah. So if that, if I'm correct now, if I'm not correct either way, but I believe there was a fight before that, which was the Chael and the Anderson fight the weekend before the weekend after wow. no one's missing their work on a Wednesday at 11 AM to go watch Chris Wyman and, and Mark Munoz was the main event. That fight oh, happened at like four o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon. And then he went, then he went on to go say, I thought San Jose was a fight town. This is trash. We're, you know, like basically we're not coming back here. And they never did go back. They never went back after that to San Jose. Well, there, there's reasons why they didn't go Okay, back. but they didn't no. go back. I, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm, but I can't, you, you can't put that just against Dana. No. That, that's called contracts with uh, other promotions and things that happen and just, it is what it is. Okay, so it wasn't, but, let's not put it on Dana. Okay, well, let's just simply mm -hmm. say like, he went out of his way to say, I thought San Jose was a fight town. I thought, you know, it it, is. And this, a good fight it's town. an absolute fight town. Yeah. Um, 
the San Jose arenas can get expensive. I understand that portion of it too. Like, why would I go there and it gets expensive and I can go to Oakland, it's half the price. I can go to yep. SAC, it's, you know, half the price there at the um, Sacramento Kings arena. It's like those places are all cheaper to go than the SAP yeah. arena or the whatever. Yeah, it's one it of the now. most expensive to go there in yes. California. It's, it is not cheap. Absolutely. But then he has, he has the tendency to put it into other people's court. And in this case, well, this in this case, those fighters didn't fight hard because it was five in the morning and everyone's time clock was mixed up. The fighters that came from the yeah. States and the fighters that lived there. The, he, he dropped the ball by making it happen that way. Should have done the fight a normal time where the fighters would have actually fought at noon or 10 a.m. or whatever on a Saturday where people would have went to the local barbecue spot and sat down and washed or went to the pub at two o'clock and watched the main event. He's been doing that for Saudi Arabia. He's been doing that for uh, Dubai. He's been doing that for other places. Why not just tow the same line and do it for the UK? It just would have made sense. And I think you would have got better performances out of those athletes. Whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid, Element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can with sparkling electrolyte water. Roll, train, ride, or play, but stay hydrated and stay salty. I agree, but you know, mistakes are made and they may not feel like it was a mistake. I think anytime you're having someone perform in a time slot, that is something that they never do. That's you're never, you're probably not going to have great results. So that was a mistake in my opinion, but yeah, you know, they're the ones that are going to determine if it was or not by do they do it again? Do they make changes though, John? That's the question I was going to ask you. That do they make changes? Changes to what? To their to the format of um, going there and having the shows at five a.m. When you have fans, I, like I, literally, I, I definitely. When you have fans that are have paid their hard earned money from Manchester in the stands asleep, and there's a lot of pictures of people that were asleep in the stands. They could have been telling you. They could have been drunk. Yeah, could have, but. <laughs> Could have, could have, and, and maybe, maybe should have. Yeah. But it's telling you it's hard on everybody, and even someone that wants to be there at the show, you know, they're falling asleep not because they're not interested. It's just your body starts to shut down, your brain shuts off, and you you fall asleep. That's just the way it is. I think they're going to look at it and go, "We we've got to figure out a better way. It's got to be a better way for our fighters, a better way for us." And something that's going to work if it's a pay-per-view something's going to work for us well one thing we've learned by having fights at the apex and during covid was that having a crowd does make a difference on how hard they fight now don't get me wrong we had some good fights during covid and during uh that time oh but fantastic. the bottom line is fans do make a difference the energy in the crowd all of those do make a difference on how these fighters uh perform inside that cage and especially in countries like ireland in the uk in the United States, those areas where well, you can go to Japan and loud fans don't, don't mean anything to them. No. Okay. And I think sometimes even in Asia, when I was over there working for one, a lot of fans didn't really do a whole lot. They didn't yeah. fight any harder. They just fought their asses off. I think in the States and in the UK and in areas like Canada and obviously Ireland, Scotland, those places, the loud fans, because of the way they, they are at uh, sporting events, most of the time drunk, they they bring the energy and then their fighters react off of that. I'll give you an example was the Peter Queeley and Ryan Scope fight. Yeah. Peter Queeley was dead in the water and that crowd just got him hyped up and he came back and won that fight. That If that crowd wasn't there, he would have just folded. He would have folded, no energy, bringing him alive, like the Hulkamania, giving him the shake. That's what it would have looked like, John. Just <laughs> come on, brother. Come on. Like, and that's what it would have looked like, you know, like, there wouldn't that would never happen if there was no crowd. If Peter Queeley did that, they might have stopped the fight thinking he was having a seizure. 
<laughs> but but that's the energy these crowds bring to certain countries. And I believe the US oh, is true. one of them. And I believe the UK, Scotland, Ireland, Canada, that energy is brought by those fans and the fighters react to it. And so it's very important to have those fans there. And I think at 5 a.m. fighter fans are falling asleep or drunk, whichever one, but they're they're falling asleep. They're tired. You know, they even have bedtimes too over there in the UK. Everybody does somewhere. 